Pixar's latest Elemental is in theaters now. Will it catch fire at the box office, or is this going to pour water on your expectations? I'll tell you right now. Hello, everybody. I'm Dan Merle, and this is my review of Elemental, which is the latest from Pixar Animation and only the second Pixar film to hit theaters since 2020 when theaters closed while Onward, another Pixar film, was in theaters. Elemental's from director Peter Sohn, who voiced the robot cat Socks in last year's Lightyear and whose previous directorial film with Pixar was 2015's The Good Dinosaur, not a high watermark for the studio box office wise. Screenplay credit for the movie goes to the husband and wife duo of John Hobart and Kat Lickle, who are veteran TV writers making their feature debut, and Brenda Shway, also a veteran TV writer, making her feature debut. Like some of the best Pixar films, Elemental is a metaphor or an allegory or whatever you want to call it, but unlike some of the best Pixar films, this one isn't incredibly deep or difficult to crack. Leia Lewis voices Ember, a young woman who's made of fire, whose parents immigrated to Element City years ago, setting up a shop in a neighborhood where all of the other fire people feel safe. Ember's life has changed after a meet-cute with Wade, a local government inspector made of water, voiced by Mamadou Ache. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but fire and water don't really mix. As a matter of fact, they're total opposites. And when you mix fire and water, well, it turns out some pretty interesting situations can arise. I guess you could call this movie Guess Who's Burning at Dinner, or maybe Do People. Elemental's a great idea for a short, but it's an underbaked idea for a movie. The parallels to immigration and interracial dating are pretty surface level and obvious, and the movie doesn't do anything interesting with them. I think you could have had an interesting movie with these different themes, it's just not necessarily this one. The movie is basically a repetition of the same few beats. There's the attraction, rejection, attraction thing that you get with every romance that's difficult to figure out. You also have Ember worrying about her strict immigrant parents, finding out that she's dating a local water boy. And of course, there are so many water slash element puns. You're so hot. (laughs) Excuse me? No, I mean like you're smoking. No, I didn't mean it like that. Are you done yet? Also, and this is becoming a trend with animation coming out of Pixar and Disney, they must have hired some kind of like a studio lot therapist for all of the animators out here because this is the third film out of the last four from Pixar to deal with standing up to your parents and living your dreams. In this case, it's Ember's conflicted feelings toward running her father's shop when he retires. She wants to do something a lot more artistic. I understand that animated films are often archetypal in their stories and themes, but between this movie, Onward, Luca, and Turning Red at Pixar, and then Encanto and Strange World at Disney Animation, Parents have had a rough time lately with films released by Disney. Well, I mean, rougher than usual. And it really does smack of a lot of animators that are getting old enough to make it into the industry and start pitching their own stories and scripts. And the story or script that they keep pitching is, I'm going to live my own life, Dad. It's, of course, a conversation that happens often between people, especially people who choose artistic careers versus parents who maybe want them to pursue a safer line of work. But you would think that there would be some kind of a tracking board somewhere where they said, well, you know, we just told a couple of these different stories. Maybe we should just try try a different theme because you could have the fire and water romance in this movie and not have this part where Ember is coming up against her father's expectations and stuff that is such a repeat beat from other movies and it makes it feel like there's either very little oversight or they're running short on ideas. Her dad will be nope. super, so no. super disappointed. Actually, Pixar is kind of starting to feel like the book publishing company in Elf, where you have the same group of people that are all sitting around a table pitching ideas, but the well is starting to run dry. We open on a young tomato. He's had some tough times down at the farm, you know, rabbits. No, no tomatoes. Too vulnerable. Now, there are some issues with Pixar that they're not necessarily in control over, like the fact that Disney has been pushing its audience to streaming for years and now is expecting them all to go back to the theaters. But the creative side is under their control. Luckily for them, Elemental is largely boosted by the continued innovation and genius at the animation department. And this is one of their most beautiful films. It's the kind of movie that you can pause at any given moment and just like you want to hit the print screen button and just hang it on the wall. If the story for Elemental had been given a little bit more meticulous oversight, then this could have been one of Pixar's best movies paired with the look of it all. 
The movie also has a great score from Thomas Newman, his first Pixar film since Finding Dory. Really, in every non-narrative sense, Elemental is one of Pixar's finest. But Pixar built an entire reputation, rightfully so, in not just delivering great looking movies, but also great stories, and that's where they come up short. I'm actually not sure exactly who the target audience here would be. On a story level, I think the movie is too shallow and predictable for older audiences, but too repetitive and almost abstract at times for younger kids. I think that animation fans are going to love it on a technical level, and thank goodness Pixar actually did put this on a big screen, because for the few who will see it that way, it is a breathtakingly beautiful film. And the story isn't bad necessarily, it's just not that original, and it doesn't really have that hook that kept me involved throughout the entire film. And these movies are expensive. The, the budget for this film is reported around $200 million. And conventional Hollywood wisdom would say, well, with a budget that big, you have to play it safe. And maybe that's why they took these story beats. But I would say it's actually the opposite. At this point, when audiences need even more incentive to get out of their house and go to the theaters, playing it safe is almost the worst thing you could do because you're delivering a story that people have seen before. Pixar as a studio built a reputation on breaking new ground, something I'd argue they last really did back in 2015 with Inside Out. And on an emotional level, I'd say their last fully impactful film was 2017's Coco, although Soul and Onward also had their moments. Turning Red was fun and subtle in ways that this movie wasn't, and in many ways also told the same story, but better. But that movie also didn't go to theaters. It was pushed to streaming while other movies were making the inroads in theaters as people started going back. Really, it's time for Pixar to innovate again, and I think a key part of that process is taking the Pixar brain trust who has delivered some fantastic movies and letting them take the backseat to a new generation to find the next level of Pixar films that can recapture some of that magic and glory from the old days. Because yes, you may have some failures, but they're not gonna be boring failures. And this movie isn't a failure, I wouldn't say, but it really does seem to be a bit stale for the Pixar brand. It's like, oh, you know, uh, fire and water, we'll put some great animation on. It's a Pixar movie, people will go see it. You can't rely on that anymore. And I think the message that has to get across to a lot of the people working at Pixar is that in the context of these stories, they're not the kids anymore. They're the parents, and it's time to let some younger people live their dream. So in the last review, I introduced a new rating scale, and I got a ton of comments. A lot of you loved it. A lot of people said, like, well, it's basically a one to five star rating or an A to F rating, uh, just, you know, with a different skin on it. And that's not actually not true, because this is very much, you know, not to sound too kind of hippy-dippy about it, but this is much more emotional, how a movie makes me feel than it is about ascribing some sort of a numerical or a letter grade to something that just seems kind of... I don't know, final to me. So when I look at Elemental and where it would fall on this scale, I land at it's fine, and really it's the animation that pushes it that far. And if you look at the slider, there are also degrees in each level as to how much I loved it. And this really is just kind of right down the middle. It seems like kind of a safe throw right over home plate that Pixar was hoping would be a home run, but that's not what audiences are looking for right now. They're not looking for safe. And you have it half there on the technical side, but halfway just can't quite get it done for Elemental. So if you are a Pixar fan, I would say see it because the animation is so great. But if you're trying to decide, well, am I going to spend 75 bucks to take the kids out to see it with the popcorn and the concessions anyway, I would say that it is probably a better time and money investment to wait, as so many people are doing now, for this to stream on Disney+. Plus. Whether that makes business sense for Disney, well, you know, that's for Disney to decide. So that's my review of Elemental Now in Theaters. What do you think of the movie? Have you already seen it? Are you planning to go see it? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching the channel. Still a busy few days ahead. I'm going to have my spoiler review, full spoiler review for The Flash coming up on the channel tomorrow. I'm going to try to get a review out for Extraction 2. And then coming up next week, we've got the full box office breakdown of The Flash's opening weekend. And we will continue to cover this summer box office season as it unfolds. Thank you so much for watching this review. Until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you then. Bye.